Well, when you give people what they want, you try to do it again, right? That's right, folks. Back to the birds. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Today we're going to do some more birds. A little differently, though, we're going to do a pen and ink and wash over that. Really fun, simple technique, very popular with journaling. And specifically, I'm going to be doing a tufted titmouse. Very frequent visitor to our feeders around here. Yes, I'm afraid I'm a bird nerd. Oh, shut up. But I think you'll see just how easy this technique is. I'm going to be using this. This is the Pentel Pocket Pen. Now what's different about it is it actually has bristles like the watercolor aqua brushes. It's not those rubber tip kind of brushes. And it's cartridge fed and it's permanent ink. So when it dries, you can watercolor right over it. Makes for a nice brush uh, ink line. And it gets a very tiny thin point line. Some of those rubber tipped brush pens do not. They are fairly fat and kind of clunky. I'll be supplementing with a Pigma Micron where I want more of a uniweight line and some details. So you'll see that as I'm working. Anyway, let's get to the birds. Well guys, today I'm going to be painting in my Strathmore hardbound watercolor journal. It has Strathmore 400 watercolor paper in it. This was a journal I started back with this video right here, you may remember. And I haven't done any more in it, but I had thought this would be a bird book for the birds around our area and I love watching the birds so I thought this could be a neat little coffee table book. So today I want to do a ink and wash technique. Now that's a very very common journaling technique and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I'm gonna try to be fairly loose today and I, the thing about that is a lot of times I say that and then I end up getting tight. I tend to have to pull myself back from being tight, but what I want to do is be fairly loose. Now, I may be a little tighter with the drawing here, but we're going to try this out and see how it goes. I like doing ink and wash where you, you detail the bird in ink. When you go back and add color, you just do it in very specific spots, and you do it fairly loose. And that's the look I'm going after today. So I'm going to start off just using this brush pen, basically just outlining the bird. Brush pens are great because of the thick, thin nature you can get with the line. They're a little harder to control than, say, a Pigma Micron or a Uniweight line, which I'm going to use a Pigma Micron a little bit later, you'll see here, to fill in some details. But for the outline, this is great because I can get some expressive little kind of feathery edges and some nice little thick thin um, expression in the line. So that's basically what I'm doing with the brush pen. My first time ever using one of these and I really really like it. Pentel also makes one called a color brush. It's a lot longer and it looks more like an aqua brush, like the ones you fill with water, but it's filled with a permanent ink. Well, this is like that one, but this is a pocket pen brush. And I, I like this because you can refill it with the cartridges. It's compact, so it'll be great for plain air. And uh, this was just a lot of fun trying and using this. And I've already tested it out. The, the ink is, is very um, water indelible, I guess you might say. Once it thoroughly dries, gotta make sure it's thoroughly dry. Here you'll see the micron, the pigma micron, and I'm filling in some very fine expression lines and details on the bird. The key to ink and wash is to get a good rendering of your subject in ink. The wash and the watercolor will basically just be just some local splashes of color. Going back with the pen brush just to get some expressive. And I'll slow it down here so you can see what I'm doing. Getting some expressive little edges to the the bird. So as I start watercoloring this, I really didn't have a plan. I just started throwing in some color and 
I really, really, really had to resist the temptation not to overdo it. I'm, I tend to be, because I was an illustrator and did a lot of very realistic subjects, I tend to just really render a subject. Um, because that's a lot of times that's what my clients wanted. So I had to really force myself to just be very limited in where I put the color. And you'll find that the more paint you add to an ink and wash, really the more overworked it got or it gets. In the case of these, I could have actually done less than I did. And I've seen some, some ink and wash where they actually leave whole areas of the drawing just completely uncolored and just color part of it is like so you can see some of both techniques very clearly and I have seen some ink and wash techniques where they get very very detailed with the color but I don't tend to like those as much I like it where they just you know very loosely just splash in a little color here and there and that's what's what's really neat and fun and it, well the other thing that's fun about it is it separates the drawing and the painting a little more than when you're doing a, a regular watercolor and I, I'm going in with the micron again adding some finer details microns are easier to control but you don't get a thick thin line adding a few more hatching and expression lines here and there just to give it some energy Tufted titmouse is very frequent. Bird feeder bird in our area. It just looks like a gray cardinal. It has a little kind of splash of pale orange on the side of its breast. Just about done detailing the bird. And I'll throw some color in here. I keep repeating it, but it's just a really great journaling technique and one I'm going to practice a little more and I hope you'll try it because it's a different mentality than a standard watercolor painting. It's just a different way of thinking. And this is all speeded up, but on these two birds, I didn't spend probably more than 40 minutes for both. 45 maybe, counting the pen and ink. Now that's once I had the drawing complete. And here I'm just going back in. I'll slow this down so you can see. I'm just, I wanted to make sure that there were some striking dark areas. That, that's kind of, works well with this technique. Is get some nice, where, where it's logical, get some nice strikingly dark little low lights you know and and voila I'm gonna go back and add some lettering to this and some journaling and we got a cool little bird entry and a and a bird journal Wow I've got to do more of that that was really fun I've not done a lot of that in the past but I'm gonna do more because it's just such a great journaling technique now, I don't know if you follow me on Pinterest or not, but if you don't, or if you do, uh, check out this board, the Sketchbook Journal Inspiration. I've got several examples I've collected from around the web on just this very technique. Not everything in there is on this technique, but a lot of things in there are on this technique. Just a simple pen and ink and wash technique. Great, great fun. Let me know your experiences with pen and ink and watercolor wash. What do you use? How do you use it? What do you find the best mediums to work on or, or surfaces? What journals do you like to use? Do you use a, an actual brush or a dip pen? Share those comments with everybody. Thanks so much, guys. Glad you tuned in. If this was a help to you, I hope you'll like the video and I hope you'll subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. And we'll see you next time.